In this video, we're going to do the calculation to determine the pH of a salt solution. The example I'm going to look at is solving the pH of a 0.25 molar potassium acetate solution given the Ka of acetic acid of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Whenever you're looking at a salt solution, we first want to look at the dissociation reaction of our salt. So, assuming this is a strong electrolyte, which it is, my potassium acetate will completely dissociate into potassium cations and acetate anions. Before going forward, we want to analyze this solution a little more and use our rules to determine whether or not we are going to predict an acidic or basic solution. So first, we can look at our cation, K+, plus, or potassium ions. And we'll recognize that this is the cation of a strong base. Which, KOH, which is a strong base. I'm just going to abbreviate that SB, strong base. And because of that, this anion will be neutral. When looking at our anion, our anion is going to be the anion of a weak acid. specifically acetic acid and because of that this cat anion will be a weak base and thus will give me a prediction that I'm going to have a basic solution. The major species involved in this salt reaction since this is a complete dissociation, our major species are going to be our K+, plus, which is a neutral ion, our acetate, our weak base, and then lastly, water. Now let's look about how we can go about calculating this problem. We're going to use our ice tables that we looked at previously. We only have to focus here on our weak base of the acetate anion. So let's write out our reaction involving our weak base. of C acetate and then when we're doing base reactions we're going to see what happens when we add water in our equilibrium here so because I'm a base I'm going to grab on to my, my hydrogen from So we have our reaction, we're left with um, hydroxide, and you should recognize this reaction now as a KB expression. And we weren't given KB in the problem statement. And this you'll see a lot in these salt problems. You will, um, we have the KA we were given for Our Ka was given for the acetate 
acetic acid here. But we still need our KB, and so we need to use our relationship with KW and solve KB equals KW over KA. And so KB equals 1.0 to the minus 14. We're going to assume we're at 25 degrees. And you're going to have to do that for a lot of these calculations, even if it's not stated in the problem statement that you're at 25 degrees C. And we get a KB value of 5.55 times 10 to the minus 10 for that reaction. At this point, we can actually go about doing, and I'm just going to jot that up in the top here. And erase this stuff. So we can set up an ice table like we did in chapter 14 in the pH problems. Because at this point we really are just trying to figure out the pH of this acetate ion. And we have 0.25 molar that was given in the, the problem statement. The water, it doesn't matter the concentration. We, we have no acetic acid at the beginning, no hydroxide at the beginning. In our ice, our change is going to be minus x. The water is negligible. Um, plus x. Plus x. Our equilibrium then 0 0.25 minus x plus x plus x. So when we go to put this in Kb, products over reactants. So we get x squared over 0 0.25 minus x. And we will use the small x approximation. And so that gives us 5.55 times 10 to the minus 10 equals x squared over 0 0.25 and x solves out to be 1.17 times 1.78 times 10 to the minus fifth molar, ignoring the negative root because that is obviously erroneous, equals the OH minus concentration because remember when dealing with this, the OH is what we're dealing with as X. Be careful that you don't assume that is the, the pH um, or the, the H3O plus. So we can get our pH simply by doing our pOH first. Sorry. So our pOH is 4.93, therefore our pH is equal to 14 minus 0.93, and that gives us 9.07. Always good to do the sanity check here and make sure that this makes sense. So here 
we get a basic result. We said that our salt was basic, therefore this makes sense. You can go ahead and validate the assumption. When you validate the assumption um, by looking at the percent ionization, the percent ionization calculates out to be which is just our OH minus divided by our initial C2H3O minus. And that um, number comes out to be 4.712 times 10 to the minus 3%, which is much less than... 5%, therefore this is a valid assumption to do small x. And you're going to find that the high majority of our calculations, the small x approximation, is going to be a good assumption. So you always kind of want to start out with that before going through any kind of um, quadratic formula business because for the most part these calculations can be greatly simplified with that assumption. So that is the pH of a salt solution. The same procedure would apply if you had a, um, an acidic salt versus a basic salt, which we have here. Always work with your reactions because the reactions are going to help keep everything um, organized. You will obviously, once you kind of recognize the pattern, you can go straight to your KB or KA expression, whichever one is appropriate. Um, but it's always um, a good idea to look at what your reaction is um, to guide you through these problems. So that is um, those calculations. Come back for the next video. We'll be looking at pH of buffers.